Hello and welcome back to Simply Biology. In today's video, we're going to be looking at how to separate amino acids by a technique called paper chromatography. Now it's important to remember that amino acids are the monomers that make the proteins, which are all the polymers. So amino acids are joined together by condensation reactions with the elimination of a water molecule to form a peptide bond. In a, a bond between two amino acids is known as a dipeptide and multiple amino acids is known as a polypeptide. So therefore amino acids are the repeating units or monomers that make up a polypeptide a monomer. So without further ado, let's get started. So as I've just said, amino acids can be separated by using a technique known as paper chromatography. So different amino acids have different solubilities and a, a different affinities to both the stationary and mobile phases and therefore can be separated. This differences in the solubility and the affinity of each amino acid is due to the R group. Now the R group, remember, is the variable group. This is different and unique depending on the amino acid. So eight amino acids have non-polar hydrocarbon R groups. So for example, CH3, C2, CH3, or H for, for glycine, or an example of this is valine. And these non-polar hydrocarbon R groups lower the water solubility because obviously they can't form hydrogen bonds with water or the elutin solvent and therefore have a greater affinity for what's known as the stationary phase. You then have six neutral polar R groups, so for example serine, which ha which increases the water solubility. So the not the polar R group is able to form hydrogen bonds due to the differences in electronegativity of the polar bond, able to form bonds with the water and therefore has a great affinity for what's known as the mobile phase and therefore will travel further up the uh, the chromatography paper and can be separated. So then finally we have what's two amino acids are aspartic acid and glut glutamic acid which have uh, the an acid group as their R group. So therefore they have extra extra water solubility they are a lot more soluble but obviously this depends on the pH. So it will be more soluble in acidic pHs because obviously they have an acidic or a carboxyl amino uh, amino carboxyl and R group. Now we're going to look at the technique to separate them. So what you have to do is you have to place solutions of amino acid on chromatography paper about two centimeters in diameter. This is a process known as spotting and you must try to avoid fingerprints on the paper, paper because oils on your finger may run, run onto the paper and it may make the results inaccurate and it may interfere with the experiment. So you have to wave the paper to ensure that the spots are dry and then you have to roll into a cylinder and place into a beaker of what's known with something known as a lutein solvent. This should not, the paper in the spots should not be immersed and should not touch the walls of the beaker. So the spot should be above the line of the lutein solvent and the walls of the beaker should not come into contact with the capillary, with the uh, chromatography paper. So the lutein solvent will rise up the capillary, up the chromatography paper by a process of capillary action. And you need to remove the capillary paper, chromatography paper, sorry, from uh, when it gets two centimetres from the top of the paper. So when that, when the elutin solvent gets two centimetres from the top of the chromatography paper, you need to remove it. The amino acids with a great affinity for the mobile phase will travel further up the, the chromatography paper. Then the amino acids with a great affinity for the stationary phase will form strong bonds with the stationary phase and will not travel as far up the chromatography paper. And therefore, then, at this stage, however, the amino acids are not visible. What you have to do is you have to add a chemical called nihydrin, which stains the amino acids with a purple-violet colour. However, this is very, very dangerous and safety precautions should be taken when handling this chemical. 
And finally, once the amino acids are now visible as a uh, purple-violet compound, you can calculate what's known as the retardation factor or the RF value. And this is calculated by the distance moved by the amino acid or the solute divided by the distance moved by the solvent, which is also the elutin solvent. So this value should always be between zero and one. It can never be greater than one. Thank you for listening to this video and I hope you now understand what an amino acid is, the differences in the solubility between the amino acids and how you can separate amino acids using a technique known as paper chromatography. Thank you and goodbye.